Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. What page the Wilson? She fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to St. Andrews. We are getting ready to go here for some varsity baseball this afternoon between the St. Andrews Highlanders and the San Antonio Wolverines. Jack Farrell joining you here for what should be an exciting contest. We are, uh, pol apologies here, we are getting started a, a little bit later. This game was supposed to start at 5 o'clock, but some traffic with the, the umpiring crew and the away team resulted in a uh, a push pushing of the first pitch back to around 515 and both of these squads as you can see the managers and the umpires getting acquainted there at the home plate so these guys are getting ready to take the field here any moment we are very excited for this one San Antonio school making the trip up here for the Wolverines appreciate them for Getting on the road here. We're going to get starting lineups in just a moment here. This game is just a couple minutes from getting underway for San Antonio. Their starting pitcher will be Tristan Eilers, number 33. Their leadoff hitter will be Luke Landon. He'll be left fielder. And hitting second, shortstop Aiden Delgado and D.H. Ian Ruggiero. Fourth, first baseman Chance Chapman. Catcher, Wade Carnes. Third base, Hamilton Moy. Right field, Jacob Ward. Second baseman, Aiden Beach. And in that nine spot, center fielder, number two, Gage Centeny. The Highlanders are taking the field now as we are going to get our lineups in from the PA as well as the National Anthem just with the setup that we have here it's not always easy to hear the PA thought we'd get the starting lineups read out on air first and for your Highlanders they're coming off a Saturday doubleheader in which they lost two games to do different uh, Houston schools St. John's must uh, the St. John's Mavericks and the Houston Christian Mustangs the Houston Christian one was a uh, an excellent game of just a show of pitching. Brandon Shell, the starter, and Cole Nasconi, the starter for the Highlanders. He pitched well. He did get the loss. But here we go. National Anthem being played. And when we come back, we will have the Highlanders starting lineup. We'll be right back.
not the most audible of national anthems, even pretty quiet in the ballpark here. But it has been played, and now it's time to get you that St. Andrews starting lineup here. So yes, for St. Andrews, leading things off will be Aiden Madoff. Number two, you'll be playing first base today. And batting second, shortstop Wes Aubin, catcher Charlie Welland, second baseman Jake Garcia, left fielder Malcolm Burns, center fielder Cole Nasconi, third base Noah Gorlick, right field Knox Matthews, and rounding it out, number 13, designated hitter Sam Suter. The starting pitcher for the St. Andrews Highlanders today. They're out on the mound. Number seven, Mark Greenberg. Off the bench, available for the Highlanders. They've got five players. Number 14, Andrew Higginbotham. Number 28, Tommy Bullion. Number 44, Marshall Harrell. Number 23, Reese Carter. And number six, Chris Jarrett. We are finally just about underway here. It's a beautiful day here in Austin. It's uh, been nice all day. Hello. We got a dog coming to the ballpark. <laughs> Stop by for some smells. I'm going to smell interesting. And as we were saying, yeah, it's a gorgeous day for some baseball. The wind has picked up a little bit here as uh, it's gotten a little bit later. But it's been a nice day. 77 degrees right now. Your time for the first pitch. And we are ready to get underway here. Going to be leading things off will be number nine, Luke Landon. He's going to be playing in left field for the Wolverines out on defense. You see Welland back there. We saw him get some opportunities behind the plate in the second game of the doubleheader. He played first base in the first game against Houston Christian, but against St. John's, Charlie got some work in behind the plate, and uh, he'll get the start again there today. Mark Greenberg pitching, and leading things off is Luke Landon. Righty steps into the box. 5.20 p.m., your first pitch time, and we are ready to get underway. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. It's hit and lifted high on the infield. Playable. Shortstop calling off, and that's going to drop in. Nobody called for that one. And Luke Landon reaches to start things off. And that's been a recurring theme. St. Andrews doesn't always make those plays that they should. As the throw over is not in time. There you go. That wind is starting to pick up quite a bit here. And another throw over before... Aiden Delgado sees his first pitch. And the second hitter for the Wolverines playing shortstop. Here's the pitch. That's high for ball one. Delgado with landed on first base. Should have been that first out with the pop-up on the infield. Here's the 1-0. And he held back on it, 2-0. Very important here for the Highlanders to keep the Wolverines off the scoreboard here in the first inning. And They've already got the leadoff hitter on and throw over not in time. That one very close. Highlanders thought that might have been in there. That's a good move from Greenberg on the mound. You're really trying to get landed here. 
Delgado steps back in. Three balls, no strikes to him. And another throw over. Greenberg really wanting to hold that runner. Delgado steps in. Runner goes. Throw down is in time but got away. Rolls into center field, so a runner on second and nobody out. I'm looking at the scoreboard now. It says 3-0. I think Delgado only has two balls and no strikes. I don't think... Well, now now it would be 3-0, actually, with the uh, with the pitch and the throwdown. So, so the count is now correct at 3-0. Greenberg still looking for that first out. Delgado stands in, and he calls time. Meeting at the mound between Welland and Greenberg. Welland making his way back behind the plate now. The 3-0. Greenberg looks back, throw over, as he's really not wanting to throw very many pitches this first inning. We've had more throwovers than pitches thrown. Here's the 3-0. Walked him. So now two on with no out. Brings up Ian Ruggiero, number 39, the DH. A lot of power behind him. You can see it in his legs. I'm sure Ruggiero will be looking to open things up for the Wolverines here in the first inning. The first pitch is lifted high again on the infield. Should be playable. But this one lands harmlessly in the Wolverine dugout. But with Ian swinging through that foul ball, he's got an 0-1 count. Ian DHing. Chance Chapman, the first baseman, on deck. Rocking a pretty massive beard. Might want to get some birth certificates out here. I'm just kidding, of course. Chance Chapman. He's got the Duck Dynasty look on lockdown. The 0 1. Giro takes his ball one. Got away from Greenberg. The 1-1. One, one. Delivers. That's in there. Strike two. That one got some of the plate. Ruggiero didn't like what he saw, but strike two. As Greenberg might need a new hat. Greenberg to the rubber. 1-2. Still looking for that first out of the inning with two on and none out. Here's the pitch. That's fouled off. We'll do it again. That'll go into the screen. Oh, that one lodged itself up high there. Found its way through a gap in the screen. And that ball will probably be there for the rest of time. How about that? This wind is getting pretty gusty here. It's starting to get cold. 
in the shade, despite the high temperatures. Another throw over. Greenberg held on to it. One, two. That's hit well into right field. Drifting over. That will get down and over the head of the St. Andrews right fielder, Knox Matthews. Runner comes around third to score, but only one will score. So Landon comes around third to score. Delgado goes first to third, and Ian Ruggiero has opened up scoring today with an RBI double. So off the drop to pop up, Landon comes around to score. San Antonio leads one to nothing here in the top of the first inning. Brings up Chance Chapman, big first baseman in that four spot. Ruggiero showed off his power here now in the four hole. Chapman looks to open things up even further with two runners in scoring position and nobody out. First pitch, he was taken all the way. Found the zone for strike one. You know, one pitch, misses high, ball one. Number 30, Wade Carnes. Catcher for the Wolverines is on deck. The 1 1. Swing and a miss for strike two. Chapman now down in the count 1 2. That's low, but swung on strike three. Well, well played by Welland. Dropped the pitch, got the throw over, but looked the runner back to third base. So Chapman goes down on strikes. Welland with the good play to keep the runners where they're at, and that's out number one. So now two on, one out. Brings up Wade Carnes. Here's the first pitch to Carnes. Good pitch, just missed the zone. Breaking ball there for Greenberg. But just low in the zone for ball one. The 1 0. Misses high ball two. Carnes, a right-handed batter, playing catcher. Is ahead 2-0 in the count. Greenberg steps off. Greenberg ready to go. The 2-0. That's swung on and missed. Runner will stay. Attacking that low part of the zone. This Carnes now 2 and 1. Looking for that pitch to hit on the 2 0 count. Green's got some more like t shirts than actual jerseys. They've got Wolverines across the chest, got white pants. Got numbers on the back and the sleeve. As you can see with Carnes there, number 30, as that pitch misses for ball three. St. Andrews just wearing the home whites. Well, 
white caps with the light blue brim. The 3-1. That one's hit in the air to right field, drifting to foul territory, and it will be a foul ball. Matthews couldn't reach over and make the play. Got a glove on it, though. Tying of the shoes for Carnes. He's got a full count with one out, two on. A good opportunity for him to get a couple RBI. Highlanders, of course, looking to limit that and get out of this with only one run scored, but they've still got a ways to go, still two outs to get. Well, Greenberg could get one of them with a pitch right here. That's going to miss for ball four. It's a great take because that was close to the zone. Wade Carnes reaches on ball four. Hamilton Moye to the plate, third baseman, number 15. This team's got a lot of height as uh, we do have a quick substitution. Garrett Rangel coming into pinch run here in the first inning. Of course, with that rule, Wade Carnes will be able to come back in and still play defense, pitchers and catchers. You can pinch run for them whenever you want on the base paths without actually removing them from the game. So here's Moye with the bases loaded, one out. He's wanting to bring him home. Swings on that one. Fouls it off for strike one. So for Moye, this is, of course, his first time at the plate. It's already the sixth batter coming to the plate in the first inning for the Wolverines. Already a 15-minute top half of the inning. But Moye looking at strike one. Greenberg, here's the pitch. That's swung on strike two. Moye staying aggressive, and it's got him down in a hole, 0-2. Oh, and Greenberg, if he can get these guys to swing at pitches out of the zone, it's going to be good for him moving forward. So otherwise, they've been pretty disciplined at the plate. Here's the 0-2. Oh, That one on the outside of the plate, ball one. The one, two. Moya hits this one well. That's going to get, no, knocked down at second base. The throw over is in time. What a play at second base for Jake Garcia. Makes the diving stop, run, run, do, or excuse me, one run does score. Aiden Delgado makes it, and everybody advances. But a great diving stop, saves a couple runs. Jake Garcia gets out number two. So Moye does get retired, but he does bring home one runner, so it's a two to nothing game here in the first inning. Two outs, and that's strike one to Jacob Ward. Jacob Ward, number 17, playing right field today for the Wolverines. Aiden Beach on deck, the second baseman. Greenberg trying to get out of this thing with only two runs surrendered. Here's the pitch. That one's lifted into the outfield. Couple guys ranging over, got to call this off, and that's going to be an out in right field. Knox Matthews makes the play. So two runs score on an error, a hit, and a couple of walks. That one hit, an RBI double for Ian Ruggiero. But now we head to the bottom of the first. Aiden Madoff will lead things off for the Highlanders. As we head to the bottom of the second, want to give a thank you to the fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors for sponsoring us here on the Vipe Network. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. We'll be right back with the bottom of the first.
Bike Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BikeBYPE.com. Bike is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to BikeBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Coming back in here for the bottom of the first. St. Andrews always got the good music going. Got some white stripes for you before the bottom of the first. Aiden Madoff going to lead things off for the Highlanders. Aiden going to look to get things going as the Highlanders trail 2 to nothing here with their first hacks at it coming up. San Antonio plates seven batters in the first inning. And now Tristan Eilers steps to the mound and try to keep things clean for his offense. Here's the pitch. That first pitch is swung on and it hit well to second base, but playable, and that's gonna be out number one. So Aiden Madoff grounds out to second base there, Aiden Beach was there at second for the putout. So a 4-3 on the putout brings up Wes Aubin. Short stop for the Highlanders. And, well, St. Andrews didn't play very well during the doubleheader. Wes Aubin definitely did as he takes the first pitch for a strike. He went Five for five in his opportunities at the plate on Saturday in that doubleheader. So we'll see if he can keep the hot streak going as he's down 0-1 with one out. This one's lifted high into foul territory, drifting out of play, but that will land harmlessly just over the fence. So Wes now down 0-2 with Charlie Welland on deck. Here's the 0-2 from Eilers. That's fouled back. So Wes will stay alive. He'll have another opportunity here. Do it again. So with nobody on and one out, Aubin is looking at an 0-2. Here's the pitch. And getting around a little early on these. Got to sync up that timing a little better. The 0-2. It's once again fouled off. I have a third opportunity at it. Wes swinging it in most of these pitches. Took the first for a strike, but he's been letting it fly since. Here's Jake Garcia shagging balls. Not on deck, but in the hole. The 0-2, that's in there. Strike three, froze him. That's the first strikeout of the game for either team. Goes to Tristan Eilers, and we'll put it in the book backwards. Brings up catcher number 22, Charlie Welland. Charlie had a few good plate appearances as he fouls off the first pitch in uh, that doubleheader, but struggled to reach safely. 
as he did double in that doubleheader in the first game against Houston Christian. He was just roping things into the outfield, but just right into the teeth of the defense. So we'll see if he can reach safely here in this game. Obviously, he would love to do that for the team, as he is now looking at a 1-1 count. The 1-1 is hit well. That's going to be a tough play. And that will get down. Trying to range over and get that from second base was Aiden Beach. But Welland, soft contact, gets him a shallow outfield single. Brings up Jake Garcia, senior, at number nine. Puts Malcolm Burns on deck, big number 31. Well, and taking a healthy lead, the first throw over. Gets back safely. Here's the first pitch. That's fouled off. Looks like catcher's interference is going to be the call. So Jake Garcia. So Jake, yeah, Jake Garcia reaches via catcher's interference here in the first inning. So now that brings up Malcolm Burns, the left fielder. What was that? I'll go with that. <laughs> so Burns to the plate. Looking to bring somebody home to cut into this lead here in the first inning. Righty steps in. So with two on, two out, Highlanders send their fifth batter to the plate. Here's the first pitch he takes outside. The 1-0 to Burns. Eilers delivers. That's in there for strike one. Now he's seen one. Opportunity to let it rip. That pitch misses low. Oh, no, we've got a piece of the zone. That's strike two. Burns now 1-2. That's fouled off. Got a little early on that one. She's a little late, actually. Good job for Burns trying to protect himself on that pitch and stay alive. Here's the 1-2. That misses for ball two. He's able to hold up. So now two balls and two strikes to Burns. The 2-2. Two -two. That's once again fouled off. We'll do it all over. Some power behind that swing. Eilers gets the sign, takes the pitch, and here's the delivery. In there, strike three, got him looking. So, the Highlanders plate five. One hit for Charlie Welland, and Jake Garcia reached via a catcher's interference, but that is all that the Highlanders are able to muster there in the bottom of the first. We go to the top of the second, it's still two to nothing. You're listening to Highlander Baseball 
on the Vibe Live Network. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Bottom of the second here at St. Andrews. If you're just joining us, San, Anto- uh, San Antonio leads two to nothing here as we enter the second inning of the game. Seth, or excuse me, Mark Greenberg on the mound here for his second inning. Let me make sure I'm looking at the right box score here. <laughs> As Aiden Beach, it's 8-9-1 hitters due up for the Wolverines. Aiden Beach, the second baseman, had a pretty active first inning in the field playing some defense, but now he'll get his first opportunity at the plate. Rocking the number 20. Hey, number four, uh, well, playing second base, wearing the number 20. That's today, April 20th. How about that? Hayden in that short second baseman looking to get his first hit of the ball game. He takes the first pitch for a strike. Mark Greenberg hoping for a better result in this inning, though the one of the uh, runs he gave up unearned. This one's lifted high on the infield, definitely playable, coming over from third base to make the play is Noah Gorlick. And we have out number one on a pop-out to third base. Brings up Gage Centini. Luke Landon on deck with the lineup about to turn over here. As he gets this one down, that's a great, great play from him as he reaches on the bunt single. Showing off that speed, getting down the line. You can't place one much better than that. Brings up the top of the order, Luke Landon. His first time up, he reached on an error. He popped it up high on the infield, but Highlanders weren't able to make the play. So another throw over is Greenberg. Likes to worry about these base runners while he's on the mound. Landon steps in. Waiting for his first pitch with one on and one out. Centini gets back. Here's the pitch, swung on, strike one. Landed takes a deep breath. As we have another meeting here at the mound, well, halfway between the mound for Welland and Greenberg. Because he got it all sorted out. Greenberg back to the mound. Well and back squatting behind the plate. No balls, one strike to Luke Landon. Left fielder, leadoff hitter. 
Runner goes. Welland throw down is wide, but backed up by Aubin. Welland is getting it down there and putting it in pretty good position. Just haven't been able to get that tag down or get that throw right where it needs to be. But he's getting it back there on time. So now one ball, one strike. Is that pitch on the throwdown missed? It's a nice move from Greenberg there. Almost got him. Landon now showed bunt. They might be thinking about getting this runner over with Aiden Delgado on deck. He was walked on four pitches his first time up. pitch. The bunt gets down on the high pitch. Greenberg bobbles it. Throw over is not in time. So Landon reaches on a bunt single. That's two bunt singles in the inning. Centini is now over there at third base. Aiden Delgado looking to add to the total here. Two to nothing. He reached, as we mentioned last time, on balls. Throw over. Ooh, does get away. But almost disastrous results on that throw over. Aiden uh, Madoff was able to corral it, but squeaked away from him. Runner from third easily. Could have gone if that ball got any further away from Aiden. But Greenberg at the mound now, throwing over. Runner goes, no throw. Throw back to third now. So everybody's safe. Now Luke Landon over at second base. Now he can't be worried about the throw over with no steal opportunities. A ball and no strikes. Now two balls, no strikes to Delgado. Got one out in the inning. Leadoff man Aiden Beach popped out to third base. So Delgado, oh, there is a hit well over the infield. One run scores. And that's all it'll be. So now runners at the corners, I'm just about to say, Delgado had seen six pitches, none of them strikes, and the first strike he looks at, he hits well into the outfield, and he gets an RBI single. Centini comes home, makes it a three to nothing game as Delgado now at third base. Brings up Ian Ruggiero. Last time he was up, hit a double. Brought home a run. Now he's looking at runners at the corners with one out. Anything into the outfield scores a run. As we have a Bach from Greenberg, run scores. That sends Delgado up to second base, brings Landon home. It's now 4 nothing with a runner in scoring position and one out. Two balls, no strikes to Ruggiero. He's going to call time to get a couple hacks in before stepping back in here. Hitters count. Two balls, no strikes. Could be a pitch to hit here. Here's the 2-0. -oh. 
That misses. Ball three. So now three balls, no strikes. On the 3 0, Ruggiero takes his cut. So now uh, three balls, one strike. Oh. Got some scoreboard issues here today. That's ball three. Here's the 3 1. Huh. Scoreboard off by two, so that's ball three. Three balls, one strike. Gonna work on updating that. Zat's gonna miss that. Finally, ball four. Marty, not good at broadcasting baseball games. They now they're making it tougher on me. My goodness. <laughs> Brings up Chance Chapman. First baseman, his first time up in the first inning, he struck out. It was the one strikeout of the game so far for Mark Greenberg. So four to nothing here. Two on, one out for the four hitter Chance Chapman. The big fella. Rocking the Jason Worth look. So we got a throw back to second base. It's just off the bag. Pitch. That's hit. That's foul. It's going to be over the fence and off the Highlander dugout. Is it no balls and one strike to Chapman. Chapman likes to swing that bat. Pulls back the bunt. Runner caught in no man's land. And throw back to second. And Aubin throws to third. Gets away. Now the throw back to second. He'll return the other way. Runner's going to go over to second. So they'll just take Delgado. And the throw over to second gets away. And the runner's going to go to third anyway. So the Highlanders lose the ball. They got one man in the rundown. But Ruggiero ends up going first to third. So we'll get Delgado caught stealing. Ruggiero took first. And or Ruggiero from first took second. And they just willingly took the out for Delgado. But then when they tried to throw it to second to get Ruggiero, the ball squeaked into the outfield. And he was able to take third base as well. So now two outs, one man on. He's on third base. And it's the, the three-hitter, Ian Ruggiero. The guy who just walked the last at bat. Now Chance Chapman at the plate looking to bring him home with no balls and a strike. Make it two strikes. So now no balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. And that one's hit well, and that's going to be a line out as Wes Aubin ranges over and gets where he needs to be to make that out. So a line out to six for Chance Chapman. Ends the inning, but not before two more runs score on a couple of hits, or on three hits and a walk. So we head to the bottom of the second. Highlanders have six, seven, eight hitters due up. They trail by four. You're listening to St. Andrews Baseball on the Vibe Live Network. We will be right back. 
Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Cole Moscone will lead things off for the Highlanders here in the bottom of the second inning. Six, seven, eight hitters due up. It'll be Cole Moscone, Noah Gorlick, and Knox Matthews here in the second. Tristan Eilers is back on the mound, number 33, for his second inning. Gave up a base hit. In the first inning, otherwise he has been golden. We got catcher's interference in the first pitch. Swung on for Nisconi. That's going to get down into left center field. He'll hold up at first base, and it's a leadoff single for Nicole Nisconi. Center fielder today. Pitcher every now and then. Eilers already with two strikeouts, both of them looking there in the first inning. Gorlick to the plate, third baseman. As he swings on this one, this could be two. And, oh, no, the second baseman bobbled it. And they're going to get Gorlick at first base. Gorlick thought he beat it out. That was an opportunity for a double play, but Beach couldn't handle the ball cleanly. But they get Gorlick. For the first out of the inning, does advance Nascone to second base. That brings up sophomore right fielder, number three, Knox Matthews. Matthews, first pitch is swung on for strike one. The 0 1, swing and a miss for strike two. Matthews now down in the count, no balls to two strikes. The 0-2, that missed inside for ball one. Good take for Matthews. Knox trying to advance the runner here, maybe bring him in with a hit to the outfield. The 1-2, and that'll get through, but not deep enough to bring home the runner. So now runners at the corners with one out as Matthews gets one to roll through the infield. That's the second base hit of the inning for the Highlanders. They're trying to break that uh, break that shutout and crawl their way back into this thing. Brings up the DH in this game, Sam Suter, number 13, in the nine hole. Top of the order due up after this. Now it's one. Uh, that pitch is going to miss low ball one. Aiden Madoff on deck. One ball, no strikes to Suter. Throw over, not in time. Another throw over. It's 
Suter still waiting for that second pitch. And it won't be here. Three throwovers in a row. As we've already been going for 50 minutes here. We're only one out in the bottom of the second with all these throwovers from these pitchers. Is that is going to get the inside of the plate for strike one. Both of these pitchers work slowly, and they both are very concerned about the runners on. It's a recipe for a very, very long baseball game as the runner goes. The pitch that got away from the catcher. Suter looking at a strike and two balls with two men on in scoring position. One swing cuts this lead in half. So that's going to miss high. Count goes 3 1. Ball four. Base is loaded, one out. Brings up Aiden Madoff, his first time up, he grounded out to second base. Aiden takes that one for a strike. Now we've seen one. Made off. Swings through this one. Fouls it off. Made off now down 0 2 in the count. Be a big strikeout for Eilers. No balls, two strikes, one out. Here's the pitch. That one's going to get down through the infield. One run will score. They'll bring home Matthews. The throw to the plate is not going to be in time. So Aiden Madoff with a two RBI single here in the bottom of the second to cut the lead in half. Nascone comes home, as does Matthews. Suter goes from first to third. Or no, excuse me, first to second. And now with one out, Wes Aubin comes to the plate with an opportunity to tie the game. Looking ahead here, might have to call this game early. It started late and it's been going long. No, no lights out here. The pitch to Aubin is fouled off. He's down in the count 0-1. Sunset now in less than two hours. No balls, one strike to Aubin. As he hits this one through the infield, and that's going to be a tough play, but it's an out. They almost got Suter there at second base on the throwback, but instead it'll just be a, a single out, a line out to center field for Wes Aubin. That's out number two, brings up Charlie Welland. Try and knock things up with a swing of his own. Charlie's one for two today, or excuse me, one for one today. This is his second opportunity at the plate. His first time up in the first inning, he singled. First pitch, fouled off.
the 0-1. That one's golfed high into the air. Going to be a tough play. But ranging over to make that out is Jacob Ward in right field. Nice play from him to call it off and get it. So Welland ends the inning there on a fly out to right field. But not before the Highlanders score two runs on three hits. They cut the lead in half. It's 4-2. to two. We head to the top of the third. Wolverines will have their five, six, and seven hitters due up. It'll be Wade Carnes, Hamilton Moye, and Jacob Ward. Looks like Greenberg going to be out there for another inning. Mark looking for a cleaner inning. Struggled to keep these Wolverines off the base paths and Welland not out there right now. Suter catching some of these practice pitches, but he is uh, getting the armor on. He'll be back out in a minute. It'll be Wade Carnes to lead things off. Five hitter, the catcher. First time Wade was up, he walked on five pitches. And a couple practice pitches down. Now here's Wellen coming out of the dugout. Got the helmet on and ready to go. His five, six, and seven hitters. Those are all looking at their second ABs of the game. This group win a combined, uh, we'll call it 0 for 2. Carnes steps in. Ready here for the start of the third. Here's the pitch. That's high. Ball one. So we've got a softball game with St. Andrews on the Vipe Live Network going on right now. You can see it from here. Appreciate the fine folks at St. Andrews. Got a lot of broadcasts for them this spring. So here's the 2-0 as that's going to miss inside ball three. As Greenberg is speeding up. He's gotten in a bit of a rhythm there towards the end of the second, but it looked like he was sitting down he cooled off a little bit. Seemed like he was rushing those pitches there. But Wade Carnes has reached two straight times this game with a walk. Brings up Hamilton Moye. As here's another throw over. I'm gonna worry about the batter. In this ballpark, it's tough to get guys stealing. This one gets away and the runner goes. So we have another uh, pinch running opportunity for Garrett Rangel as he steals second base there as the ball got away from Welland. But Moye, his first time up, he grounded out to second base, but it did bring home a run. <clears throat> That's now a ball and a strike to Hamilton. That misses low. Here's the pitch. That's hit through the infield. Runner will have to hold up at third. 
So a single for Hamilton Moyer. Now two on with nobody out. Brings up Jacob Ward, right fielder. Flied out his last time up to end the first inning. Looks like we're going to have a quick pitching change. It'll be Tommy Bullion. And he enters with two on here. Nobody out in the third inning. So we'll make sure we keep track of this. Tommy Bullion will be on the mound, number 28. So Mark Greenberg exits the game. He went two complete innings, picked up one strikeout. Now Bullion, going to get an opportunity. Last time he pitched was against the St. John's Mavericks. He came in in the fourth inning and actually faced, I believe, just one batter. And he grounded in, uh, got them to ground into a double play, an inning-ending double play. So we'll see what he can do with a more full relief appearance as he comes in with a couple guys on. Runners at the corners. So he'll first get a look at Jacob Ward, right fielder for the Wolverines. He's 0 for 1 today. Getting some of these warm-up pitches in. We'll have to check the lineup here in a moment. I think Greenberg's day will be done. We might see him out in the field if anything gets changed. But for now, Greenberg is out of the game. And Bullion comes off the bench. He was uh, out of the game previously. Is Here he is. First pitch is a strike to Jacob Ward, who swings and misses. Ball and a strike. No, excuse me. No, no balls on a strike. This here's a throw over. Bullion trying to keep him there. Here's the 0-1 to Ward. That was that skipped before it got to the batter's box, but Ward sort of defensively swung at that. As we have a runner trying to walk his way to second base as a throw down to home to get the runner is not in time. Just a sneaky steal by chance or uh, by Hamilton Mummy, excuse me. To slowly move up to second and on the throw down, Carnes steals home. Score has gone 5-2 in favor of the Wolverines. Now one runner on at second base. Ward down 0-2 in the count. Is that win once again picking up? That one gets away. Runner goes to third. Moy now at third base. So the double steal turns into a run, and now a man at third base with nobody out. Jacob Ward with a ball and two strikes. That one got away from Bullion.
bounces before the uh, the dirt. It's two balls, two strikes now. Jacob Ward trying to bring another runner in at five uh, to, to two right now as this one's fouled off. Still nobody out. Aiden Beach on deck. That's hit well into center field. Should be playable. And Nascone gets it, but runner tags. And is able to score. So those two runners that were holdovers from Greenberg both come in with one out. But Jacob Ward is the first out of the inning. Gets the sack fly RBI. Brings up Aiden Beach, his first time up. He popped out to short, or excuse me, to third base. And he takes the first pitch for a strike. Aiden Beach, the second baseman for the Wolverines. Beach lifts this one into the air, playable. And making the play in shallow center field is second baseman Jake Garcia. So Aiden Beach... Out number two, a couple pop-ups. Here's the score. It's now six to two on the Jacob Ward sack fly. Gage Centeny, bunt single his first time up. He came around to score there in the second inning. Centeny going to try and get on with a bunt again, pulls back. Wolverine scoring two runs in every inning so far. That one is going to skip in the dirt ball, too. Santini obviously got quite a bit of speed on the base paths. As he swings through that pitch for strike one as it gets away from the pitcher on the throwback, and we're all good. Now two balls, one strike to Gage. With that speed, he's playing out in center field. We've seen him cover some ground out there to make some tough outs in this game already. The 2-1 to him. Swing and a miss, strike two. So now two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. Two runs have scored in the inning. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him on the outside corner of the plate. Strike three to Centene. He goes down looking. That will end the inning. So two runs score for San Antonio on a walk and a hit. Jacob Ward... Got the RBI on the sacrifice fly. Score is 6-2 to two as we head to the bottom of the third. You're listening to Highlander Baseball on the Vibe Live Network. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Welcome into the bottom of the third. Jack Farrell joining you here for this 
evening of high school baseball. San Andrews trails 6-2 to two in the bottom of the third. Four, five, six hitters due up for them. Tristan Eilers out there for another inning. He's given up a pair of runs through two. Jake Garcia, his first time up, reached via catcher's interference. Now he's looking at a ball and a strike. Malcolm Burns on deck, struck out his first time up. The 1-1 one -one to Garcia, swing and a miss. Jake down a ball and two strikes now. Looking to be the second straight leadoff hitter to reach. This one skips in the dirt ball too. Yeah, the second straight leadoff hitter to reach for the Highlanders in consecutive innings. Islanders looking to cut back into the deficit. They got two back, and then they lost those two in the last inning. So far. We've only had one half inning. That has been score-free, and that was the bottom of the first for the Highlanders. Because I'm not sure what it is, but this one's fouled off. I, I uh, always dress incorrectly for the St. Andrews baseball or softball games that I do. It always seems like it's a little too chilly or a little too hot. As here's the 2 2, that's fouled off. Garcia's going to stay alive. So today it's nice and, and warm, but we're sitting here in the shade. It's pretty chilly with this wind that we've got out here today. As you can see, the net blowing, and you can see the jerseys billowing across the chest of the players. As this pitch is hit well into shallow right, but that's going to get over the head of right fielder. As Garcia is digging around second, he heads for third. And there's going to be no throw. As Jake Garcia does it, he gets on. Great A-B from him. Staying alive and eventually reaching. Jacob Ward got a glove on it. He played it well, but as he was darting up on it, he came up too far. It went over his head. As Malcolm Burns up now, first pitch swinging. It's lifted into right field and making a sliding catch is Jacob Ward, so he got the tougher play. Brings up Cole Nascone, who's one for one today. Nice play in right field from Jacob Ward, not allowing the run to get in. Jake Garcia tried to tag, but was forced to trot back to the base. Brings up Nascone. Singled his first time up. That one's fouled into the net. Cole led off the second. Had a single eventually came around to score. So now one out and one on. No balls and a strike. Moscone swings at that one. That one tailed out of the zone. Garcia, yep, good good call from him. He would have been out at home. Moscone wanted him to try it, but that was well covered by Tristan Eilers. The 0-2. Can't quite catch the outside of the plate. Nascone stays alive. It's one and two. Eilers, the one-two. 
That one's in there, got him strike three. That looked like the same spot as the last pitch, but Nascone goes down on strikes. He used one for two on the day, brings up Noah Gorlick. Gorlick avoids that, I'm not sure how. Teammates wanted him to just take the plunk, but Noah avoids the the pitch there. He'll stay alive. It's ball one to him. Matthews on deck. That pitch inside to Gorlick. It's 2-0. Oh, oh. Two balls, no strikes. That one misses outside, ball three. Gorlick doing a good job keeping his eye on the pitch here. He's up 3-0 in the count, one pitch away from a walk. His first time up, he grounded out to second base. The 3-0 is in there for a strike. He caught the top part of the zone, Noah. Enough height to not get the call there. 3-1. Fouled off. Count goes full. It's an opportunity here for Eilers to get out of the inning unscathed. After, not sure how it'll be scored. I assume there, there might be an error charge to it, but having a man on third base, effectively a leadoff triple for Garcia, no out. And there he is. He's able to get out of it. So they strand Garcia at third base from no outs. Gorlick goes down on strikes after being up 3-0 in the count. Eilers clutches up, goes 1-2-3 after giving up that leadoff hit. And headed to the top of the fourth inning. It's 6-2 in favor of the Wolverines. Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, about yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Top of the fourth. It will be the top of the Wolverine order. Luke Landon will be the leadoff hitter.
It's Tommy Bullion back out there on the mound for another inning. He came in with nobody out in the third. So he's now down 0-2 to Luke Landon. Landon is one for two. He reached on an error in the first and had a bunt single in the second. So he fouls this one off, two balls and a strike. After Bullion came in. A couple errors are in uh, defending the base paths, as well as the sacrifice fly uh, brought in two runs as this one's lined over to third base and caught by Noah Gorlick for out number one. So those two runs that were scored in the third will be assessed to Greenberg. But Bullion did a pretty good job coming in, getting those outs. Retired all three batters he faced. So here's Landon, or as Landon goes down, uh, brings up Aiden Delgado, but actually it's going to be Garrett Rangel who's in for Aiden. So two balls, no strikes to him. The 2 0, swung on and missed. Rangel still ahead in the count 2 1. That's strike two. Rangel, count evens up, two balls, two strikes. And Bullion might have a little thing going here. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Just low, ball three counts full. Ian Ruggiero, the on-deck man. He's one for one. But he's reached both times he's been up with a double and a, and a walk. His 3-2 pitch is grounded to shortstop. Throw over is in time for out number two. Aubin, a little nervous there. He didn't charge the ball the way you might like, but he's able to get it and make the play in time. So two up, two down. Brings up Ruggiero, who, as I said before, is one for two. The double and a walk. He walked his last time up, which was in the second inning. So he takes that first pitch for a ball. So we're about an hour 20 into this game. So here's the 1-0. So this one's lifted high into drifting foul territory. Should stay in play. And over there, making the play for the third out is Noah Gorlick. So a line out, a ground out, and a pop out. Three up, three down. The first such inning of the game for the St. Andrews Highlanders. We head to the bottom of the fourth. St. Andrews looking to cut into this deficit a little bit. They trail 6-2. Highlander baseball will return in just a moment. Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events, 
For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Bottom of the order due up here for the Highlanders in the bottom of the fourth. Eight, nine, and one hitters. Knox Matthews is going to lead things off. His first time up was in the second inning. He singled and came around to score. As his first pitch, he swings at a high high pitch. Would have been outside of the zone, but that's strike one to Matthews. Sam Suter on deck. Got a, some quick updates here. It is Tristan Eilers on the mound once again as he delivers the 0-1 pitch, and that's hit weakly through the infield. Going to be a tough play. Throw over from third is in time. Great defensive play over on that left side of the infield by Hamilton Moy. Moye, excuse me. We do have that quick update. Over in right field, we now have Garrett Rangel. We had Aiden Delgado exit the game here in the fourth inning. And Jacob Ward, former right fielder, is now playing shortstop. So they remove their shortstop, replace their right fielder with the pinch hitter, and take their old right fielder put him at short as... We now have Sam Suter up, who walked his first time. He is now down in the count 0-2, two, two straight strikes to him. As this game started with the crawl, as Suter swings and misses at the 0-2 pitch for strike three. Yeah, we we're going to say uh, it started with the crawl. The first inning and a half took about 45 minutes. We've had, since then just been zooming along. Highlanders sent four batters to the plate in the third. San Antonio sent just three batters in the fourth, and now two up, two down for the Highlanders here in the bottom of the fourth. As this one's hit to third, Moye, another excellent defensive play. Ends the side. So a three up, three down inning for Tristan Eilers in the San Antonio Wolverines. Two ground outs and two excellent plays to third base from Hamilton Moye. We head to the top of the fifth inning. It'll be four, five, six hitters due up for the San Antonio Wolverines. Chance Chapman, the big bearded legend, will be in the leadoff spot unless the lineup changes a little bit. Until then, we're going to go ahead and take a short break. And when we come back, we'll have top five Highlanders trail six to two. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Back in top five. Looks like we will actually have a, a pinch hitter, so no more beard god in the game, which personally I, I'm actually kind of sad about. It was a it, it was an honor to behold such a gorgeous mountain of facial hair. Chance Chapman ends the game over two. <laughs> 
We'll see. Uh, we'll see if we have any defensive re uh, replacements there in the bottom of the fifth. But for now, Seth Morris steps in now as the four hitter. Happens at the top of the fifth inning. Bullion will have another opportunity on the mound here in the fifth. He's made the most of his opportunity here so far. That one gets away. The big fella, Seth Morris. <laughs> uh, his socks aren't quite long enough. <laughs> he's got his pants rolled up to his knees, and there's a little bit of skin showing as he swings through that one. It's strike one. Wouldn't be surprising if for a guy that size, they don't always have the, the right baseball pants stocked up. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss, strike two. Speaking of baseball pants... I think the best place you can pick up some baseball pants would be at Academy Sports and Outdoors. As here's the one-two from Bullion. That misses low and away. Or low and inside, excuse me. And that Academy Sports and Outdoors, you can get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. So here's the two-two. That misses tight for ball three, as that might be the best shoehorning in of an ad read that I've done in my young broadcasting career. That misses ball four. So after retiring six straight, Bullion issues a walk his first of the game. Looks like we're going to have pitching change after that leadoff walk as Bullion exits giving up no hits just that it was just his first walk struck one batter out now he steps out it looks like it's going to be Wes Aubin replacing oh instead of going to the bench they'll have someone replace him from the infield and it looks like we're going to have Marshall Harrell come in off the bench And with this pitching chain, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Vipe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vipe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vipe Live does more than sports? Vipe Live does band recitals, academic events, for more information on how Vipe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vipe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vipe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, about yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone, touchdown. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. But pitch to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. It'll be Wes Aubin on the mound moving forward with nobody out here in the top of the fifth. Bullion, an excellent relief appearance from him once again. Brings up the five-hitter, Wade Carnes. Seth Morris, the big fellow over there on the base paths at first base. Is that's going to 
miss inside for ball one for the first pitch. Some quick defensive substitutions. Jake Garcia has moved over to short. Wes Aubin now on the mound for you. And playing at second. It's a new guy. So that's in there for strike. It looks like it's uh, Marshall Harrell now playing out at second base. We'll see where he slots in. I imagine he might just be a, a designated fielder at this point because uh, Islanders didn't remove anybody from the lineup. Because that's a swing and a miss. Strike two. Ball, two strikes now to Wade Carnes. And that's double play ball here. As we've seen Aubin pitch a few times before, we've seen him pitch with the JV team as well. Here's the one, two. High, throw over to first. Oof, they might have an opportunity to pick that guy off. Wellen still there behind home plate. Two balls, two strikes now. That's come back or to the pitcher. They'll go over to second for one. Throw over for two is not going to be in time, but they do get the one. Carnes grounds into a fielder's choice. Would have been a one four three put out. Brings up Hamilton Moyer. Hamilton singled his first time up, or his last time up, excuse me. He's one for two today. His first time up, he grounded out to second base. In the third inning, he singled and came around to score. He scored the sixth run of the ball game for the Wolverines. As runner goes, Aubin with the slow windup. Throw down is just a bit late. It gets away and into the outfield, but not far enough to advance the runner any further, so... One runner on second base now with one out. As Carnes is in there with a successful stolen base. Moye with a couple great defensive plays in the fourth inning. As the 1-1 one -one from Aubin. That's in there, strike two. Islanders trying to make it two straight innings of run-free baseball as they gave up two apiece in each of the first three. Islanders scored two of their own there in the second. The one-two. That's hit weakly to third base. The throw over from Gorlick is in time, they say. That Madoff still had his foot there on the back, almost pulled him off, but... A tough throw over is in time. It does advance the runner. But now the sacrifice is out of play. Speaking of sacrifices, Jake Ward, his last time up, he had an RBI sacrifice fly out into center field. Brought home Moy, actually. As this one's hit to short, the throw over is... In time, out number three. Jake Garcia makes the throw over. Madoff gets the pick. And once again, no runs score for the second straight inning. Despite the leadoff walk to Seth Morris. We head now, bottom five. As the Highlanders now starting to run out of time, just nine more outs them to try and get back into this one. Wes Aubin, unless things have changed in the lineup, the leadoff man for this bottom of the fifth inning. He's the current pitcher now. And that was a good inning of relief for him. 
It will be Tristan Eilers throwing once again for his fifth inning. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have that bottom of the fifth inning for you. Once again, two, three, four hitters due up for the Highlanders. Return in a moment. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Aubin will be the leadoff hitter after all, so I do believe that Marshall Harrell will just be a uh, designated fielder here moving forward. We'll see if there's any changes after this. As first pitch swinging, throw over is in time. Jacob Ward gets the put out as Aubin goes down on one pitch. Brings up Charlie Welland. Charlie is one for two in the ball game. His last time up, he flew out to right field. First pitch to him. It's fouled off. Jake Garcia, the new shortstop on deck. He'll get an opportunity here with the, uh, just one out in the inning. Swing and a miss, strike two. Well and down 0-2 in the count now. The 0-2. That one's hit high. Watch out, everybody. That'll be out of play. And, yeah, that'll land safely. So, 0-2 with one out. Swing and a miss, waving at it. Strike three. So, Wellen goes down on strikes. Looked uncomfortable up there for that at bat. That can happen sometimes. You can tell he's a little frustrated as he walks back to the dugout. Eilers had his number on that one. But that brings up Jake Garcia. He's reached both times. Once via catcher's interference. Once via, seemed to be an error out in uh, right field. But if it doesn't go in as an error, it was a triple. But I, I, I would personally, I would think it's ruled, ruled as an error. As this one, that's hit well. And no error that time. Because that's out number three, a fly out for Jake Garcia to right field. And we head to the top of the sixth. Another scoreless inning for the Highlanders. And it will be the bottom of the order due up for the San Antonio Wolverines. It'll be the eight, nine, and one hitters. I do believe they are out of bench, uh, guys. So it should be Aiden Beach. Second baseman over there to lead things off. And it's going to be Wes Aubin once again. Pitching for the Highlanders. And while we wait for the side to change, we will go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back, everybody. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE, Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 13, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 
seconds. Really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one! Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Aiden Beach leading things off for the Wolverines. We've reached the sixth inning. Shadow's starting to get long out here in Austin. First pitch fouled off. Now it's one and one here to Aiden Beach. He's over two today. Aiden playing second base, looking at a one one count. It is Aubin out there once again. Two balls and a strike. Now just six more outs for the Highlanders to try and get back into this. That one's in the dirt. Three balls and a strike now to Beach. Gage Centini on deck for the Wolverines. Will be Luke Landon after him. Eight nine one. The three one delivery. That misses outside. That's ball four. No movement in the dugout for the Highlanders. Aubin. It is going to be his inning to continue. But a five pitch walk to start things off. Gage Centini, the man who will. Look to advance the runner here. He's reached via a bunt single, and he struck out his last time up in the third. He's going to try and get another bunt down as this is popped up to pitcher and a throw over to first base. That's there for a double play. So uh, a popped up bunt. Nice play for Wes Aubin, the pitcher, and just about the most disastrous result possible for Centini on the <laughs> popping, popping out on a bunt into a double play. <laughs> I'm sure he, he probably won't mention that at bat uh, later on. You definitely should bring up that bunt single that he had in the second inning. It was one of the best bunts I've ever seen especially at the high school level. Got down the line in a hurry. Brings up Luke Landon now. He's looking at a ball and no strikes. Aubin looking for a 1-2-3 inning. He walked his first batter, but has since faced none over the minimum with that double play. Is here's a chopper. That'll get over Aubin's head, charging at it, and that'll get under the glove of Gorlick.
is we do have a defensive change. They've moved Welland to third base, Gorlick to short. So Welland at five, Gorlick at six. And that means that's Garcia now behind the plate. Now, Garrett Rangel is at the plate. Grounded out his last time up. As this one's going to get him in the back. As he's going to book it down to first base. So after the infield single and the HBP, we got two on with nobody out. Brings up Ian Ruggiero, who popped out to third base his last time up. He's now one for two in the ball game with a walk and a double. Takes the 1-0 pitch for strike, number one. Aubin, not worried about those two runners on the base pass right now. You've just got to worry about the guy at the plate here. So he takes that one outside for ball two. The 2-1 to Ruggiero. Misses downstairs. Throw over is not in time. Close play. Almost got Rangel there. But now Ruggiero's looking at a three-ball, one-strike count with two outs and two men on. They're all right to load the bases here. You got one to spare, but with Seth Morris on deck, you can tell that guy's got a lot of power. He walked his last time up. It's the 3-1 pitch. That's fouled off right towards us. Three balls, two strikes. Cap goes full with two outs. Aubin takes the sign. Now from Garcia. Here's the payoff. In there, strike three, got him looking. Aubin gets out of the inning unscathed. After a walk, then a double play, then an infield single and a hit by pitch. Aubin is able to make his way out of it. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning now. It'll be Malcolm Burns to start things off. Five, six, seven, two up for the Highlanders. They've got six outs to work with. A trail 6-2. to two. Highlander baseball returns here in just a moment. Vibe Live, formerly KMAC Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE, Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events, 
For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Tristan Eilers out there for his sixth inning. Only giving up two runs. And he's done a pretty good job shutting down the Highlanders today. Since the third inning, Garcia reached via an error. And since then, Eilers has retired nine straight batters. He's really gotten going and really only had one rough inning. He faced five in the first as this one is going to be a tough play as it got away from the defense but not enough speed there for Burns and he's going to be out number one on a ground out yeah looking at that first there was a single from Welland and then Garcia reached via the catcher's interference but that was it for them and then in the second inning the uh, three singles led to two runs. Just three singles and a walk led to two runs. But since then, we talked about Garcia, and then it's been nine straight, now ten straight batters put out. As Nascone may put an end to that, as that's going to land in safely in center field. And a one-out single here in the bottom of the six for Cole Nascone. Cole is two for three on the ball game now with a pair of singles. Brings up Noah Gorlick, who's over two. Gorlick got around Titch late, fouls that off. Down in the count now. And we've got time. And now time in. The 0-1 to Gorlick now. Here's the pitch. That's crossed the plate for strike two, looked inside. But it got enough of the pit of the plate, excuse me. Now 0-2 to Gorlick. That's hit well. It's going to get over to second base. The flip over to one, but there will be no throw over. As uh, looked like Ward wasn't really in time getting to the bag to cover it. But they do get that lead runner out. So Gorlick reaches via a fielder's choice, but... Brings up Knox Matthews with two outs. Throw over, not in time. So while that retired batter streak is over, it's still been a heck of an outing for Tristan Eilers just giving up that one single there. Matthews swings at that one. That's strike number one. Just four more outs to pick up four runs here. As the sun is setting today, both in a literal sense and a sense on the Highlanders trying to get this victory, as that misses inside. The 1-1. One, one. That's hit to second. Bobbles it. The throw over, though, is not going to be in time. Beach had a hard time collecting that one. And Knox Matthews is going to reach on an error. So Gorlick up to second. And we have a pinch hitter here, Sam Suter, the DH. Now, uh out of the game. It looks like, though, that the Highlanders are just going to be vacating that DH spot. 
because Aubin on the mound is, of course, hitting. And now Harrell, he's out in the field at second base. So I think they're sacrificing that DH spot. So Harrell, his first opportunity at the plate in that DH role, but now, of course, playing f uh, second base. One ball, no strikes now. Two runners on, a good opportunity for Marshall. So he fouls this pitch off. So a ball and a strike now to Marshall Harrell. Second baseman for the Highlanders off the bench today. You believe he came in when Aubin took the mound. So that's now two balls and one strike to him. Imagine after this they might give a, a different pitcher the closeout opportunity. So this may be the end of the road for Tristan Eilers. That's in there for strike number two. So now two balls, two strikes, two on, two outs. If only Aiden Madoff were up. He's on deck. It'd be a lot of twos. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That gets away. The runners are both going to advance. Count goes full with two outs. This game is all of a sudden looking a little bit interesting. The count goes full. Runners are on. The hit into the outfield probably scores two because they'll both try to run here with the count full and two outs. Here's the pitch, and that's in there. Got him looking. Strike three. Tristan Eiler shuts the door on the potential sixth inning rally. And the Harrell goes down on strikes. Brings us to the top of the seventh inning. It's going to be four, five, six hitters due up for the San Antonio Wolverines. We will be right back for the top of the seventh. Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vipe stands above the rest. Vipe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vipe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Top of the seventh, the final inning here of the night. It will be Seth Morris, who came in in the fifth inning as a pinch hitter. He'll lead things off. Nobody out, of course, the leadoff man. Aubin is going to get this seventh inning here. As Morris takes that pitch for a ball, he's uh, the biggest guy on the team, and yet... He can't find the strike zone with him. He walked his last time up. Worked the count full. Drew the walk. No ball and no strikes to him. He swings through that one. That's strike one. Catcher Wade Carnes is going to be the on-deck hitter.
One ball, one strike. Two balls, one strike. Two and one. That misses inside at his knees. Count now three and one. That's in there, strike two, count goes full. If Morris reaches. We saw him last time, he doesn't have a lot of speed. He was a victim of a fielder's choice in the fifth inning. So if he reaches, you still have an opportunity to maybe turn a double play. He takes pitch, uh, that pitch outside for ball four. So we'll lead off walk once again to Seth Morris. He was a leadoff hitter in the fifth and he walked. Brings up Wade Carnes. Last time up in the fifth, Wade grounded into that fielder's choice that knocked Morris off the base paths, so and other than that, in the first and the third, he's got a couple walks. Looking for his first hit here. Bobbin delivers. That's hit softly, but into the outfield. But they might have an out at second base. The throw is going to pull Gorlick off the bag, and everybody's going to be safe. They had Morris out. But instead, he's in there at second base with nobody out. And Wade Carnes now is the second hitter to reach base this inning with this no out single. Brings up Hamilton Moy. Hamilton uh, grounded out to third bases last time up in the fifth inning. So he takes that pitch for a strike. Otherwise, Hamilton is. One for three on the day. He got a single and a run scored in the third inning and had an RBI in the first. Now a ball and a strike. Jacob Ward, the new shortstop on deck. Ball and a strike. This one's hit into the outfield, but over there to make the play is Malcolm Burns. So a line out into left field as out number one brings up Jacob Ward. Aiden Beach, the on deck man. Jake Ward is over three today. But he does have a sacrifice fly and an RBI. Happened back in the third. Brought home the final run that this team scored in the game. Here's an easy grounder to third. But Wellen lost it, and the throw over. It's not in time. It ate him up. And the ward reaches. I believe that's going to be an E5. Carnes to second. Morris to third. Play anywhere for Aiden Beach. Last time he was up, he walked and was a victim of a double play that got him out of second base. This fellow's got a smaller strike zone than some of the last batters on this team. Got guys that run the gamut of size here. They've got small guys and gigantic guys. The San Antonio Wolverine team does. So now with one out, that one's going to be hit through the infield. One more run will score. Throw comes in. They're going to wave around the second, and that's going to get all the way in, but going to get away from the catcher. Now everybody advances. So a couple more runs score here. On the single for Beach, and he stretches into a second base. Ward goes uh, first to third, Carnes comes in to score from second, and Morris trots in from third. It's now eight to two. And this Wolverines team, they score in pairs. 
As here's a swing and a miss for Gage Centini. Grounded into that double play his last time up. Or rather, popped the bunt into that double play his last time up. No balls and one strike. This one's fouled off. 0-2 to number two. One more strike to bring down Centini here. Here's Aubin. It's going to step off and try to get reset. Throw over, not in time. Trying to get Ward. But he'll be back safe. We got some blood. Blood on the elbow of center fielder Gage sent to knee. So he'll head to the dugout and get cleaned up. We'll pause the game. So we'll hold it off. Aubin getting some tosses in with the infield. Two uh, two folks on, both of them in scoring position. Wolverines have already scored two this inning. Gage is taking his time with this. He's down 0-2. Just, <laughs> just swing at the last pitch and just take the out, right? Nah. You can't ask him to do that, of course. It'd be great. They're already up 8-2. And they don't have any uh they don't have anybody in the dugout that they can uh they can use as a substitution at this point. I guess they could use their pitcher, but they only had uh, two guys on the bench to begin with. They've both come off. That's Seth Morris and Garrett Rangel. Seth Morris just came in to score a run here in the seventh inning, make it 7-2. to two. And then in the same play, Carnes screaming around second base to make it 8-2. to two. As here we go, Gage is back. He's ready to take his cuts. The lefty, the lefty speedster in the nine hole. He's down in the count 0-2. <laughs> okay. I think the most poetic thing would be a, a, a strike three right here. Nope, you can't even have that. They don't give us nice things. Ball two strikes. After all that, imagine if you just went down on the next pitch, but you'll give us the justice of getting at least a, a third pitch in. <coughs> Aubin's still on the mound, I'm sure. Feels like he's lost a lot of rhythm there with that weird pause. With the 2-2. Two -two. It's going to miss low. The runner's going to stay put both places, but that's now ball three to send to knee. Luke Landon, the on-deck hitter. Three balls, two strikes. Full count. One out, two on. Here's the pitch. That one's hit into right field, and that'll get down. One run will definitely score, and they'll hold the runner there at third, so now runner's at the corners with one out. Ward scores with these. Beach 
Now at third, Gage Centini. His second hit of the ballgame. His first one to exit the infield for him. Top of the order now, Luke Landon. It's 9-2. to two. Throw over, not in time. Here's the pitch. That's way outside. A pretty good relief appearance for Aubin. Wheels have started to come off here a little bit in the seventh. Giving up three runs with just one out. Runner goes. Fouled off. Landon steps to the plate, a ball and a strike, and one out. Number nine, Luke has reached three of the four times he's been up as he swings and misses at this one. Throw down is not going to be in time. The runner will stay there at third, so now we got runners at first and second with one out. There goes the double play ball. Ball two strikes. Rangel is the on-deck man. Big number two five. Hit by a pitch his last time up. Luke Landon here. Last time he was up, he singled. That was in the sixth inning. Reached via an error, and then singled, lined out, and then singled again. So he's two for four, but three for four in reaching. So here's a hit. That'll get down into left field. One run scores. They bring another one down. Garcia cuts it off. As Landon goes to second. So another one scores. Makes it 10 to 2 here. Centini there now at third base. Luke Landon. It's a single he stretches into a double. Sorry about that, a bit of a coughing fit here in the seventh. <laughs> Brings up Garrett Rangel. Now two on with one out. Runners at second and third. It's ten to two. This is first pitch for Rangel fouled off. High and out of play. It is the light out here at Jaeger Field is really starting to wane. Here's the 0-1. That one's chopped. One run scores. Gorlick, tough play. The throw over is not going to be in time. Runner to third. Gets over the head. Oh, Gorlick almost made the play. And did they get him on the tag? Gorlick got him on the tag. He got the glove down. The throw was over his head. They're saying he got the tag dot on the helmet. San Antonio, not a fan of that call, but it's 11 to 2 in the seventh inning. So they get. They, uh, runner goes, throw down, try to make it two in a row, and they can't quite. So let's see. Centini comes in to score. Landon now tagged out at third. Ringel reaches on the infield single and now steals second base there. So that's the story. Two outs, one on second base. It's Rangel. And now here's Ruggiero. He's got a ball and a strike, or a, just a ball now. Here's that one's chopped on the infield to short. Throw over Madoff. He got his foot on the bag after being pulled off the bag. 
And Ruggiero grounds out to short to end the seventh inning, but not before they add five more. It's 11 to two here. As the San Antonio Wolverines bat around there, they plated all nine hitters. Ruggiero, the ninth hitter, grounds out there. And now St. Andrews comes out for their final three outs. It would be a pretty miraculous comeback to say the least, but it will be leadoff hitter Ian Madoff to start things off here. We'll keep it here. I'd like to thank my dear friend, Mr. Josh Cargill, my QA for the afternoon, keeping everything running smoothly and cleanly here on the broadcast. Thanks to Mr. Merle Bertrand and Miss Suna Venkat, fine folks at Vibe Media for letting me do what I do. Suna hooking us up with all the gear, Merle, our beloved captain, our beloved boss. And of course the fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors for all the ways you love to play. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. And isn't that what it's all about? Having fun out there. And it looks like Wolverines are going to do something pretty smart here. They're not going to burn an arm. Tristan Eiler is going to be out there for his seventh inning. Going to try and get the final three outs. Ian Madoff will lead things off for the Highlanders. Made off to the plate, Eilers with the pitch. Swing and a miss for strike one. No balls, one strike to Madoff. Takes that pitch for strike number two. It's a good pitch from Eilers, and his, <laughs> his outstanding outing continues. This one's popped up. It's going to be a tough play. And just unable to make it. He got a glove on it, and it just popped out. So Madoff will stay alive. Aubin, the on-deck man. Is that temperature starting to drop out here? In the upper 70s for our first pitch. Down now to 66 degrees in Austin. We're just about out of time here as the sun's starting to set. As Madoff chops this one to third base, the throw over, as if there was any doubt with Moy over there, man. He has been excellent in that third base. Another ground out to five. I think we have more ground outs to third base than anything on the, sh on the sheet for the Highlanders. Looking at it, five strikeouts on the day for Eilers. He now faces Wes Aubin, who has un been unable to keep that hot hitting streak going as he is 0 for 3 on the day. Takes that first pitch for strike one. The 0 1 fouled off at strike two. So back to back 0 2 counts for St. Andrews hitters here in the seventh inning as Eilers is turning up the heat trying to get out of this thing. Here's the pitch. Misses low and outside. Ball and a pair of strikes. Aubin still looking for his first hit of the ball game. Here is the one two. That one's chopped to short, and that'll just squeak beneath the glove. Of Aiden Delgado. As Aubin's gonna try and stretch for two. He'll get in there. That one got away from everybody that tried to make a play on it. <laughs> so now Aubin in, call that a single. He stretches to two, brings up Charlie Welland. So good to get base runners on here for the Highlanders, of course. 
Still in a pretty deep hole. Charlie one for three today. Struck out his last time up, but singled in the first. Takes that pitch for a strike. This one's hit well. That'll get over the head of the third baseman. Aubin's being waved around to score. And they'll go over to second, and they might have Well and Hose down, but the ball gets away from the second baseman, and he's going to... Oh, he looked at second base, and instead he's just going to... He's not going to push his luck. <laughs> he'll head back to first base, but that is an RBI single here in the bottom of the seventh. Brings home Mr. Wes Aubin. And Charlie has turned this into a pretty respectable two for four uh, day at the plate. Highlanders still trail by eight. It's 11 to three, and they'll have a meeting at the mound. Highlanders still on the mound. We still are uh, at the meeting. They're talking through it. It looks to me like they're going to try and ride with it. Try and get Eilers out of the game. Jake Garcia now up at the plate. It's been a pretty chilly spring, hasn't it? Got hot for a little bit, but never like above 90. And they'll keep Eilers on the mound. He's got a smile on his face. Still trying to get the final two outs well in there at first base now. One on, one out for Garcia. Last time up, Jake flew out to right field to end the inning. That was part of one of the three up, three down innings for the Highlanders as this one's in there for strike number one. Here's the pitch. It's in there for strike number two. Caught the inside of the plate there. Malcolm Burns, the on-deck hitter. Here's the 1-2 to Garcia. That one's high, ball two. Here's the pitch. This one is fouled off. So Garcia stays alive. Once again fouled off, Garcia staying alive here, prolonging the game. The 2-2. Two -two. Chop to third. Throw over to two for one, and they'll just eat. Well, I don't think Beach knew the, the score here. Throw over, not made. So now there's still two outs, but we'll give Jakey the fielder's choice. And Willen now out there at second base. Well, or I should say he is out at second base, not out there at second base. Because he's in the dugout. It's Burns takes that one very high for ball or for strike one. 
Got a much bigger zone here for Malcolm. The big fella. As he launches this one high into the air, but playable, this could be it. In right field, and it gets over the head of the right fielder again. Nobody can score. But Burns reaches via an error. And Garcia scoots on to third base. Burns now at second. Brings up Cole Nascone. Cole is two for three today. Reached on a leadoff, or a, not a leadoff single, reached via a single the last time he was up. He's got two singles and a strikeout. Takes that one for strike one. Cole down 0-1. Two on, second and third. That's outside. Gorlick on deck. He's over three today. Swinging him is for strike two. San Antonio now for the first time one strike away. Eilers checks the runners. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. It got away from Nascone, but he's probably going to be able to beat this out. No throw and a run scores. So this has become a funky seventh inning. As Nascone reaches on a strikeout. <laughs> How about that? In a run scores. It's now 11 to 4. Third baseman slash shortstop Noah Gorlick up. He's played both today. Runners at the corners. For Noah, still a ways away with two outs. Pitch in there, strike one. The 0-1 to Gorlick. That's chopped to second, or no, to first base, but that'll get through the infield. One more run scores. Nascone's going to make his way to third. And Noah Gorlick keeps, his, keeps it alive during the two-out rally. Gets another run home. Cole Nascone reaches one to third. So now just a six-run game as three runs have played it here for the St. Andrews Highlanders. Bottom of the seventh, two outs. Knox Matthews is up. So this one hits him. And Eilers is starting to lose it a tiny bit, although he did get the final strikeout. But now plays anywhere. Brings up Mark Greenberg, the pitcher. Got the start today. He pinch hits for Marshall Harrell, who struck out in the sixth. So this is the third nine-hole hitter of the game for St. Andrews. This one is sophomore starting pitcher Mark Greenberg, who went two innings in this one. Gave up four. Actually, I believe he gave up six. I think the two and the third were also assigned to him. So he hits this one into the air, ranging over his right fielder, and he makes the play. So that'll end it. Jacob Ward able to get back out there and make the play to end things. So that seventh inning rally comes up just a bit short, and the final score here at St. Andrews is 11-5. to The victory goes to the, Saint, uh, the San Antonio Wolverines. We'd like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast tonight. I'd like to thank my QA, Josh Cargill, for keeping us on the air. It's been a pleasure. Hope you all enjoyed the broadcast. Hope you all have a great night and a great rest of your week. I have been Jack Farrell. This has been St. Andrews Baseball, and we are out of here.